All right, so let's look down here and let's talk about latency. Uh, this can be a very big issue if you don't really understand how to handle it. Latency ultimately means that there's some sort of delay between the input and the output. A good example when you're talking about audio, let's say that you're trying to record your voice and your mic is connected and every time you say something in the microphone, you hear it a little bit late. That can be really distracting if you're trying to record vocals and hearing yourself slightly delayed. That's one example of latency. Uh, another example that can be really troublesome is let's say that you have a MIDI controller connected and you're trying to play a musical part in real time. If you have too much latency, every time you play a note, there's going to be a slight delay before you actually hear the result. And that can make it almost impossible to play something in real time. So understanding how to change your buffer size when necessary is a very useful skill. The buffer size is here and it's a certain amount of samples. The best way that I can explain is just so that this doesn't seem like a random number. Uh, we see the sample rate is here, 44,100 samples per second. Since we're in a digital environment, it has to take the analog audio signal and convert it into digital ones and zeros. And the sample rate determines how many times per second the audio gets processed. 44,100 times per second we're sampling the audio, uh, converting it from an analog signal to ones and zeros, and then back again from ones and zeros to an analog signal when it goes back to our speaker. So when we see the buffer size given in samples, this kind of gives you an idea of actually how much time it would take. If there's 44,100 samples per second, 256 samples is a pretty small fraction of that. And underneath we can see the input latency and the output latency. And then the overall latency, basically the overall delay that you could expect to perceive or hear, would be about 18 milliseconds, which is very minor. You probably wouldn't notice this, but some people would, depending on how close to real time you want your signal to come back to you. So a lower buffer size will give you closer to real time operation. Uh, the things that you do, you will hear uh, almost instantaneously. It'll be much faster. The drawback is that this causes a much bigger strain on your CPU uh, and you'll notice if your CPU is having some issues. Up here in the upper right corner, this little bar with the percentage, this is the CPU meter. If you notice this approaching like 70 or 80%, then things are about to get kind of hairy. If it goes over 100%, you'll probably hear audio dropouts and you want to avoid that. One of the biggest ways that you can reduce your CPU load is to increase your buffer size. The higher the buffer size, the less strain on your CPU, but the greater the delay between your input and the output. So a higher buffer size is not great when it's time to record vocals in real time, uh, but a higher buffer size is very useful when it's time to mix a song that's full of a bunch of very fancy plugins uh, that are weighing heavily on your CPU. Uh, just be mindful about the impact of buffer size, how it impacts latency, and if you don't know what to go for, the default is typically 512 samples. Uh, this is a pretty safe space between uh, very slight latency, uh, but pretty stable CPU performance. I like 256 because uh, this is pretty stable for me. But uh, now that you better understand how that works, you can play around with these settings with a bit more confidence. All right, so once you have all that set up, you're basically ready to start playing around. So let's look at the new and improved browser and uh, figure out the best way to find what we want and add it to our project.